God bless. I pray everybody has been blessed today. Praise God. Amen. Just encourage, praise God, that God has continued to keep us. Amen. Even, praise God, though we don't deserve his blessing, even though, amen, we don't deserve it. God bless you, Sister Margaret. God bless you, preacher brother Ames. Amen. God bless. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Weathers. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. We're grateful for you being with us. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Anointed woman of God. Amen. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. God bless Sister Jones. Amen. All right. God bless you. Kira, praise God. Amen. Little man's birthday. I love the parade. Amen. Everybody celebrating him. Mm-hmm. Well, pastor, amen, praise God, is determined, amen, to be healthy. God bless you, Sister Soteria. I pushed out to a lot of you, amen, earlier, praise God. God bless you, Missionary Burgess, um, on last evening about, praise God, our importance of, man, man, refocusing some areas of our lives. Amen. I pray to each one of you got it. Amen. God bless you, Deacon Tucker. Um, we got to be very careful, amen. We I mean, this preacher um, shared with us, amen, and I got that thing, and um, he shared with us about how we're allowing certain things in our, in our neighborhoods and stuff, McDonald's and all these places, amen, we're eating all this type of food, and our bodies are not prepared to even fight such a virus, and, and there's a lot of things, praise God, we're allowing to happen to ourselves that we're going to have to, amen, be a little bit more aggressive on taking care of our own self with. Amen. It's our responsibility. I need one amen out there to look out for ourselves. Amen. Um, I noticed, praise God, in my neighborhood, amen, um, where I live, uh, there's no payday loans. Um, there's not any payday loans, praise God, here. Um, you know, so why is there not any payday loans out here in my neighborhood? God bless you. Um, Sister Adrian, praise God. I don't know where they are. Are they in Arizona or wherever? Praise God out there in the beautiful God bless you, missionary Salmon. So we've got to start being a little more wise, or praise God, what we do with our monies, how we do things, praise God. I pray that if you did not get a, get the, um, if I sent that to you, praise God, share it with someone else. Amen. That everyone can get it. Amen. Well, this is, now this is a great lesson. I know this is going to be one tough lesson to some of you, praise God. This is going to and make us really look at ourselves, praise God, and really examine our love for each other. It's going to require us, amen, to really, 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 praise God, look at how we look at things. So praise God. Let's go, praise God, to Matthew, amen. We're in Matthew tonight, amen. And we're in Matthew. I, I did so much with this. And once again, I have so much out of it, praise God. So I hope we don't... Um, Hurt ourselves, praise God, once again, amen, by going over. I apologize, praise God, for skip, amen, and have it over here with me, praise God. Amen. Matthews, praise God, um, 5, 43, praise God, to 48. If you get there with me, praise God, we're going to work with that a little bit, 43 to 48, praise God. And I'm going to work it a little different tonight, praise God, than usual, because God has really been blessing and, and using this for our kingdom work. Amen. Praise God. So uh, let us go there, praise God, to it. If you have your, your ability, your, however you get your word, praise God. However you get your word, please, amen, go there very quickly, praise God, as we prepare. Amen. So, amen. Like I said, I sent out a thing, praise God, on last night. It was just a, a, a preacher that I really respect, I follow, amen. He began to share with us, amen, about some of his concerns about what is going on and how this had made a rude awakening of how we need to be a little more focused in our neighborhoods and about what we do ourselves for ourselves. So praise God. I really praise God and enjoy what he had to say. I sent it out to others. Praise God. It's not to be political. It's about, it's about us being focused. So please don't take it in any other way other than that. Praise God. Um, amen. All right. So you have it. Praise God. All right. Let's go to work. Amen. We're going to do in the. All right. All right. Praise God. Now, this is a great, great scriptures. I mean, I'm telling you, because it's really going to teach us some things here today. Let us go. It said, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbors, hate your enemies. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your father in heaven. He causes his the son to rise on the evil and the good 
sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward would you get? Are you not even the tax collector that do, doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the um, pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, in your with as your heavenly Father is perfect. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I'm grateful, God, for the opportunity to share tonight, God. I'm grateful, God, for this lesson. I've asked you all day, God, that what I'll say will bless someone's life, God, because it is a difficult task to even teach, God, because it is a very struggling task, God, for us to understand this lesson. So, God, give you, give me the ability and anointing, God, that I didn't even expect. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. First, let me do a little bit of background for some of you to help you out. Amen. Here, praise God, in the fifth chapter of Matthew, praise God. This is called, amen, the setting is called the Sermon on the Mount. This is early in Jesus' ministry, praise God. Now, I'm going to give you a little rundown. We're in the fifth chapter. Amen. We'll find, praise God, in the third chapter of Matthew that John the Baptist baptized Jesus. Amen. In the fourth chapter of Matthew, praise God, that's when, praise God, he went to the wilderness to fast and pray. Amen. And also to be tempted of Satan during that time frame. Then, praise God, he began to, then in the fourth chapter, he also, praise God, got his first disciples. Now, listen to this. We know that Jesus, praise God, knew he was the son of God from the beginning. What did he do? He was baptized and recognized who he was. Then what did he do? Find his time. Some of us, praise God, listen to this. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm going to say it anyway. Some of us are ready to run without any kind of strength. We see Jesus went into the, amen, the wilderness for 40 days. He 40 days, amen, without eating, fasting, and then was tempted among measures that any of us can handle, praise God, to prepare himself for his ministry. Some of us, praise God, don't want to go through any weathering of storm before we go through something like going out to a ministry. Because I promise you, praise God, there shall be some troubling times. Anytime you're called to do greatness or do something for the kingdom work, I need some amens out there. You need to make sure, praise God, that you are prepared to do so. I need one or two. I know. Nobody will give me amen. So you know that that's going to be troubling and weary. So that's what happens. So praise God in the third chapter, baptized by John. Fourth chapter, praise God, went into the wilderness, praise God, for 40 days, fasting and praying, praise God, tempted of the devil, amen. Also in the fourth chapter, praise God, his first, first four disciples. Now, praise God, once he did that, he went throughout, praise God, the city, teaching and preaching the word. When he was teaching and preaching the word so that people begin to gather and follow him. Here we find, praise God, this called the Sermon on the Mount. It doesn't tell me what the name of the mountain is, but it's called the Sermon on the Mount. Amen. And during this time, praise God, he came out with a couple of things, praise God, that's radical. Real radical for everything anybody else had heard in that time frame. It was so radical that people was astonished and didn't understand it. Because a lot of what he was saying was against the Jewish laws, what they had grew up thinking, praise God, what they should listen to and how they're supposed to act. It was something that they were not aware of, praise God. Amen. These beatitudes, praise God, we all, we've all we heard of them and heard of them and heard of them. Amen. But they are here, praise God. They're a series of God's value for our lives. They're values. They're values in which we should live by, praise God, to, and it will lead us to prosperity and keep us saved. It's about prosperity, all blessings, all the beatitudes about being blessed. Amen. The first one said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall... Um, and heard the kingdom of God. Amen. Then it says, amen. The, the second one said, blessed are those who mourn for righteousness, for they shall be comforted. It said, blessed are those that are meek, that they will be inherited the, the earth. It said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are those, blessed are the merciful, for they shall be uh, shown mercy. Blessed are those, blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Then it says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sakes, 
for theirs is the kingdom of God. So, amen. Those were five, praise God, beatitudes that they was not used to. They have heard different ways of doing things. They have thought different ways of doing things. And here Jesus is telling them, sitting on his mouth, a great new way of operating. It was so radical, praise God, because they had been going by the Ten Commandments, amen, and some of the other Jewish beliefs and religion, praise God. So, amen, that's what they were falling on. But we find here on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus Jesus turned the world upside down. He turned it upside down. And I like this. And, I, and this is what God gave me like this. And said, so Jesus said, and he says what he was teaching. He said, you have heard, but now I say, right? That's what he's saying. But he's really saying that was then. Now this is now. <laughs> that was then. Now this is now. We have to look at it the same way, praise God, that we have been used to doing certain things, certain ways, praise God, but now we have to do it another way. I, I'm going to help you. I'm going to get somewhere. I'm trying to teach you a little bit before we go. That was then. Now, this is now. This is now how we look at it. This is now how we have to deal with it, praise God. Amen, someone. I need some help already. He's telling us not how to act. He's not, when we're looking at these scriptures in the Beatitudes and in this chapter, praise God, and this radical shift in the way we should carry ourselves, it's not how we should act. It's telling us how we should be. Oh my God, it is a difference in how you should act in the way you should be. Amen. We act a certain way, but that ain't got nothing to do with what we really are. Amen. I remember, praise God, my mom said, you better not act up. When I go to this store, you better not touch nothing. You better not do this. You better not do that. And in my mind, my character wanted to touch everything and do what it wanted to do. See, so sometimes the way we act is not the way we be. Oh, I need some help already. And I ain't trying to preach. I ain't trying to teach. But sometimes we act. But we ain't, ain't really us. So what I'm trying to tell you, praise God, is God, Jesus telling us how we need to be, not how we should act. When we look at this, praise God, in Matthew here, and he begins to talk in the Beatitudes and begin to tell us this radical shift in the way our attitude should be and how we should look at things, praise God. He's telling us not the way we should act because, amen, we can act any kind of way in front of anybody. I've always told you, you can put a suit on a monkey, but sooner or later, his tail going to fall out. He'll walk around like a person, but sooner or later, he's going to act like a monkey. See, because <laughs> it's because he's acting, amen, and it's not in him. And when it's in you, praise God, these things we're going to talk about tonight will begin to re re come out, praise God. Remember, we got it around our neck, praise God, and it's on the tables of our heart, amen. We are dependable, praise God. When we look at this stuff, we got to build on it. When we say we're dependable, this is part of being dependable. Amen. So it says you've heard, praise God. And look at this. Before the third verse, you have heard the law saying, love your neighbors and hate and hate your enemies. But I say unto you, love your enemies and pray for them who persecute you. Now, let me be honest. And I, this is what, amen, a lot of you want to believe. If you, uh, if you love your enemies, listen to this. There's no one else you can't love. <laughs> if you can love your enemies, you can love anybody else. Now I need some amen. Come on. Y'all help me out and love on me today. Help me to help me to teach this lesson. If you can learn to love your enemies, praise God, you can love anybody else. Somebody help me out. Amen. In other words, praise God, living uh, this living on the promises of God, living 100%, we have got to start loving people and being involved in the change of thinking. We, you know, being 100% and living on the promises, we got to change our whole way of thinking in a way. Come on, oh, come on, someone. I need somebody to help me out here besides myself. We got to think a certain way. We got to act a certain way. We can't be half of what we used to be. Living 100% is going to make us a radical shift in our lives, praise God. Loving our enemy goes against our own human nature. Now, that's the God's honest truth. We learn, praise God, as children that, amen, when we did not like anybody, we used to be mean to them. We would shun them. We would talk bad about them. We would fight them. We would keep distance between us. Come on, someone. This is something that's natural. Amen. When we got upset, we roll our eyes, go the other way. Anybody with me? When we had those enemies or those that's against us, it was never a point of ever wanting to be around them. We were, amen, especially if somebody's done something to me. Come on, somebody. There's no way. It's against my nature to also be loving somebody that hates me and against me, and I don't know what they're going to do with me. 
Oh, y'all better help me out here today. Praise God. Amen. You must change your attitude. That's what about be attitude is. You have got to change it. Praise God. It takes something to change the way you think. Oh, shut. Come on, somebody help me. I ain't trying to free so fast. I'm really trying to teach this thing. You got to change your attitude before you can, you can like this and be like this. Praise God. You need to make sure you change your attitude. Praise God. Is that all right? Praise God. Amen. We must, when we say we are born again, listen to this. When we say we are born again, that means, that means just what it says. We become a totally new person. When you say you are born, you begin to save life. You begin to say, I'm living for God. You become a totally different person. Now, I need a whole lot of amens out there. You, if you have not shifted in your spirit, everybody here should be able to agree with me on this. If you have not shifted you to a new dimension, if it has not taken to another level, if you have not changed, praise God, and confessed in salvation, I think you better check on your salvation level because that should be a shift in you. Come on, someone. I need an amen out there, praise God. Amen. She'd be a totally new you, praise God. And then, praise God, listen to this. And guess what? Can I help you? You cannot accomplish this by your own will. It's by the will and power of God that you change. By you giving your confessing your salvation to God, that's when you change, praise God. And once you change, praise God, you begin to cultivate. And then, praise God, and then, you can learn to love your enemy. Amen. So praise God, you got to have it. And let me tell you, it said, let this mind be in you. That is also in Christ Jesus. See, you can be converted, praise God, and saved, but you got to have the mind of Christ. You got to have a desire. Listen, I'm talking about 100%. I want to live all the promises. I told you last night, I had a list of things that I know God can do for me by just living and doing according to his will. And I am not going to let the devil or anybody in hell or anybody on earth, praise God, to stop me from what God has for me. So in other words, praise God. I have to learn, praise God. It has to be taught to love my enemy, praise God. It has to be taught not to be around somebody that's hurt me, praise God, and be able to pray for them and encourage them, praise God. It has to be taught, praise God. Come on, sister. That's what continue to change me, God. That's right, sister. We have to be taught these things. It's about growing in God. Amen? So, praise God. To love our enemy, praise God, it's going to be a changed attitude. It's going to be a total change. Praise God. Oh, amen. Got to have the mind of Christ. Amen. You're right. And you got to, praise God, have the total change. I need a whole lot of amens out there. Because loving my enemies is not natural to anybody else. It confuses even your enemy. <laughs> <laughs> it confuses the one that's your enemy when you start loving and praying for them. Talk to me, saints of God. So loving them. Now, I talked, praise God, amen, way back a couple of weeks ago. We talked about those hurts, maybe a week or so ago. We talked about those hurts that really, amen, have dug into us. Those hurts are those violations in our lives. Those people that really mistreated us or did things against us, amen. And we know that they violated us and they, they did things that were just cruel. Come on, someone. And that thing has stemmed in us. And we prayed, amen, last week for us to be totally delivered of those things. Those enemies, praise God that every time you've seen them, they did something with you. Come on, how many are with me? Matter of fact, praise God, God, as I was praying, praise God, God showed me that some of us, amen, are still carrying some stuff and people are in their grave. Amen. You have got to, come on, somebody. It's, it's called tormenting. You're not going to let that torment you anymore. I need some help in this place. I need some help. So praise God. When we think about just forgiving and loving and praying for our enemies, those persecute us, those that wronged us, those that made us lose our job, those who one may have violated us by rape. Come on, those who wanted to beat us, praise God. Those are the ones that mistreated us and killed somebody we love and did it in front of us. And all those cruel and evil and wicked and devilish and mean and hateful things. And just right now, Jesus is saying, you got Got to love them. Come on, somebody. He didn't say you got to love what they did. You got to love them. Come on, someone. Amen. It takes your relationship with God to be able to do it. It is not by my own power, not by my own might, but by the power and the ability of God is the only way we're able to release these things like that. I need some help in this place today. Amen. Teaching us how to love our enemy. Teaching us to forgive them. You first of all just got to forgive them. Some of you need to say, all right, tonight, I forgive you. That's it. I just plumb forgive you. I release 
myself from it. Amen. Release yourself from it. Come on, someone. It is not about, praise God, whether they ever apologize. Yeah, they were wrong. Yeah, they should have went to jail. But at this point, I'm going to get it up on me because I got a destiny and a future that the devil cannot stop. Amen, someone? So, amen. Loving our enemies, praise God. 45th verse says to us, praise God, in all thy ways, you will act as a true child of God, a father uh, uh, of your father in heaven. For given, he gives sunlight, come on, both to the evil and to the good. And he says the rain to the just and the unjust. See, that was that part we was talking about, praise God, in the park yesterday when we had a powerful service. We had a great service on yesterday at Miller Park. I'm telling you that God blessed us. He showed up in the midst. If you didn't get a chance, praise God, to watch that, go back and watch, amen, our service in the park. It will explain this a little bit more. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Amen. God. Amen. Allow, praise God. Good things even happen to evil folk. It looks like some of these evil folks should never do nothing but go to hell and have the tormented things in their lives. But there is some things God allowed to happen that we don't understand. He still let them be blessed. He still let everything go flourish for them. He does it. Amen. And what we have to do, praise God, is don't be mad at them. Come on, someone. We can't be upset and bitter and look over there and want to burn their house down or, or, or sabotage what they got. Amen. Because at the end of the day, Psalms, come on, you know where I'm going to go already. Psalms 37 one and two said, fret not thou selves because of evildoers, because or be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Come on, somebody. No matter what they have, no matter how good it looks like they prosper, because for therefore they shall soon be cut down. Like grass. Uh-oh. Remember soon be. Come on, somebody says soon be. Soon be, God's going to show up and fix every situation. Soon be. Somebody says soon be. Hallelujah. God's going to come in and fix it. So don't fret yourself, praise God. Yeah, God allows it. Amen. God allows it. Look like they're flourishing. But saints of God, God's got more for you than they'll ever have. All you got to do is trust God. Sometimes you got to stop looking at mess. Uh. Oh, my God. Amen. So praise God. We got to still love like God because I'm a child of God. I do not want to embarrass my father. I told y'all that, amen, about a, about three, four weeks ago. I want to live, praise God, that God, I honor him what I do. I want to live that God is honored by the way I carry myself. Somebody talk back to me. I want to honor him, praise God, that my heavenly father receives what I do. And that's right. Soon be God's going to cut everything down. Soon be God's going to fix your situation. I know that's right. Somebody speak it into their lives. So amen. No matter how it looks for them, fret not yourself because it look like they're prospering. Amen. Fret not, praise God, because soon be God's going to take care of everything. Amen. Amen and amen. So praise God. Amen. Now it says in the 46th verse, if you love only those who you love, what reward is it? If you're only going to love the ones that love you, if you're only going to love the ones, praise God, that like you, if you're only going to, amen, this praise God, what I want to tell you is one of the things we have a major problem with is we only want to stay in our cliques. Uh-oh. Uh oh, not saints of God. Yeah, we can get a we can get a church set of clicks. <laughs> oh Lord, somebody help me. I know I was encouraging you. Soon be, that's right, soon be. But there's times, praise God, we can get to our point, praise God, that amen, we can get to a point that we don't want to love people that's like us. Only ones we can click with. Only ones that look like us, talk like us, praise God. Amen. With all oh, they sinners, praise God. We don't want to do with them. We ain't got time. He's stinky. Oh, he's a drunk, praise God. He's all that. I remember one thing. The first thing God told me, and I remember never, uh, consider yourself. Remember where you came from. No praise God, it could have been you. Come on, somebody. Sister said church clicks. That's right. We can get to a point, praise God, and we begin to shun those that need us the most. Somebody help me out. So praise God is saying right here, praise God, if you're just going to love them, amen, even, amen, I'm telling you, let me show you something. They're blessed. Ah, shout out my master. Let me tell you something to help me. Amen, praise God. In the city here where we live, praise God, amen, there's a, there's a lot, of, there, was a, there was a lot of homeless, but God has favored that too. Long story, another day. But praise God, it was a lot of homeless guys and they were drinking, praise God. Amen. And God, and I wanted to start working with them, see how I could get them in, out of the street, get them home 
homes and get them apartments. Wanted to get them to learn to trust me, praise God. Because some of them looked old enough to be getting social security and things like this, but they were homeless and they were living in homes, praise God. And I realized, praise God, that what I could do was always feed them. So I'd go get a big thing of chicken. I mean, I'd get 50 50 pieces every time I showed up and I come on that corner and they begin to eat that chicken and I go in the store and they want something to drink and I go in there get them gallons of juices, praise God, and they sit down there drink, give them cups, amen, and then they got so friendly to me, praise God, that they started inviting me to the abandoned house that they were living in, and so he said, well, man, come on up here, and then make sure everybody gets some chicken, so I went up there, praise God, amen, and I'm trusting God, amen, God's with me, amen, and went in there, and they were all in there, and the rest of them was in there, but one of them wasn't there, amen, and all of that 50 pieces, they put aside. Come on, somebody. They put aside for the guy that wasn't there. Y'all not hearing me. They was covering the guy that wasn't there. They made sure the guy that wasn't there was blessed when he got back home. See, we got to be able to look like they did. They were all sinners, all homeless, all broke, all was crooked in every kind of way, but yet and still, they was willing to protect another. Y'all not trying to hear me. If they know how to do it, if they know how to bless, praise God. Don't you know we as saints got to be able to love, amen, those that are not like us? Come on, someone. We got to love a Ku Klux Klan member. If he wants to be saved, don't mean you got to invite him to your dinner, but you want to get him saved. Help me, Jesus. Oh, God, hallelujah. We got to be able to do that, praise God. We just can't love our kind. We just can't be with the ones that are our clique. We can't treat and ostracize others that don't have as much as we do. We can't do that to them, praise God. Those people need us, praise God. Jesus came for everybody. That's why you say you really wasn't a Jew. Amen. He really prayed. Oh, y'all don't hear me. The honest folks of God was the Jews, but Jesus came and came and made all of us adopted children and sons. So when we do this, praise God, we got to understand we are adopted into the family and anybody else, praise God, we can bless. Amen. Don't ever look down on anybody. Don't ever think you're better than nobody because it's only by the grace of God you got what you got and who you are, who you are. You can be somewhere influent, praise God, not knowing your mind, somebody having to help you get up, get down and don't even know you there. Somebody help me out. So we got to remember, praise God, we never ever, ever again. Saints, when we open this church, when God begin to let those four walls come open, we have got to start loving unconditionally. We got to, amen, accept those people that took your boyfriend. Oh, help me somebody. That girl, praise God, that talked about you like a dog. You got to forget that stuff because it's about the souls. It's about you getting all that God has for you. Even if you ain't worried about that soul, you got to be worried about your own because now you are accountable for what you know. Help me, Jesus. Woo! All right, I'm going to slow down, praise God, because I was trying not to go so fast at this thing, praise God. Man, we run out of time so fast. But listen here, praise God. You know, praise God, even when God cut them out, but we have got to be to a point, praise God. This is a great lesson that we got to love to love our enemies, love, love to love people that's not like us, praise God. Amen. Don't expect everybody to walk by the same thing. One thing about churches, amen, everybody got to do like you. Everybody ain't got to shout like you shout. Ain't everybody got to praise like you pray. Some people sit down and get their joy. Some people pray God stand up and run around the church and get that joy. Some people praise them for the whole service, but whatever they do, you accept them as they are. As long as they got their relationship straight with God in their level, you need to give them a love as all you know how. Somebody help me out. Don't try to make a cookie place the kind of people. I am so glad that God didn't make us like that. You know if he'd have made us like that, all of us have the same color. We wouldn't have the new but one car. We would need but one set of type of clothes. We would need but one set of silverware. We would need but one of everything, if it wasn't same tall houses, God made us individually. He made us peculiar. Praise God. He made us perfect. He knitted, he knitted us carefully, fearfully made each one of us. And we have to learn to accept them. Praise God. Love them unconditionally. Praise God. Love is not restricted to saints only. Love is not restricted. Come on, somebody. We, we're not going to restrict our love just to the saints. We're going to love everybody. Praise God. Perfect or imperfect? Can I get an amen? I need some help in this place, praise God. Let me explain something to you, praise God. Now, the Beatitudes, I love this chapter. If you go back and read it, it's going to love on you a lot, praise God. But in Matthew 5 and the 13th verse, praise God, it begins to talk about, praise God, the salt and light. It begins to tell us, praise God, what, not only what he expects of us, amen, because I'm trying to tell you, praise God, not the way we act, it's the way we should be. 
Amen. And when we're like that, he's saying, praise God. We got to be to a point, praise God, that we can be the salt and the light for him. People need to see God in us so much that they want to be just like God. You don't hear me. I mean, not like you, but it's going to be the God in you. You're going to have something in you that persuade them and encourage them that they need to get closer to God. I need some help. Praise God before I, oh, our Lord bless me. Oh, God, it's seven o'clock. We, amen. You got to be the salt of this earth with a taste. Pray. Let me, oh, shout out, ball. Let me help you. When you walk in a room, it should turn the light on. <laughs> it should turn the taste of the whole conversation. <laughs> Let me try that again. I liked it. I said it to myself. Amen. You got to turn the light on. I don't care how bright it was. You turn the light on and you change the taste. <laughs> oh, God. Y'all ain't going to help me. I'm going to love that. You turn the light on because you are the light of God and you are the salt of the earth. So you change the taste of everything in the room. Somebody help me out with that. This is what God's expecting of us. Amen. He will bless us. Amen. Those that are wrong, you persecuted, you did wrong by you. God's going to do it. Stand still and let the Lord fight your battle. Come on, watch God do it. Let revenge is his mind, said the Lord. Sometimes God will just make your enemy watch you be blessed. You remember I told you yesterday, sometimes God favor you that your enemy can't touch you. Y'all ain't hearing me. So start blessing and loving on them, praise God. Encouraging them, praise God, to be saved. Show them how God lives and watch what God does for you. Can I get an amen, praise God? Amen. I'm going to close, praise God. We're closing out because it shows, amen, when you got the spirit of God on your life and you're doing right, amen, and you trust God, God can bless you. I'm almost finished, praise God, but I'm going to tell you this, and hopefully this will bless you. Praise God. I was in the military, praise God, and I was just about, hey man, I was been in there about 11 years, praise God. And at that time, I had a good rank for my rank, I mean, for my time in service. And what had happened, praise God, I was assigned to a, a unit, praise God, and my supervisor and my media supervisor and my senior supervisor were very prejudiced. They had a big red rock, praise God, behind his desk. He was prejudiced, and everybody knew it. He had a clan. He had a rebel flag on his vehicle. Amen. And they were just very prejudiced. And I had a, I had a team that worked for me, praise God. Amen. And all of them, praise God, was un, uh, beneath me. I had civilians, and I had military soldiers. And, and so the civilians, they had to do what I said and when I had to do it. But praise God, we were doing so well. But one day, just because it was being evil and mean and cruel, they came to me and called me in the office and said, listen, we want you to train your civilians an employee to take over your team and you're going to work for him. That all of a sudden, for no reason, I asked, well, what did I do wrong? Nothing. You've done nothing wrong, but we want to give him experience on how to run the team. And immediately when I left there, come on, I'm talking to you. I'm going to help you out. Immediately when I left there, I was bitter. I knew that it was wrong. I knew that I had some uh, abilities to go. All I had to do is go through the military. I could have fought this thing. It's called, you know, I could have went through the IG. Same thing as a grievance on your job. They could not have done it. But all of a sudden, I was leaving, praise God, driving home because it was the end of the day. I had planned the next morning not to go to work, but go down there and complain to the people over all of them. But something in my spirit of God said, peace be still. Let the Lord fight your battle. So for the next month, I taught that man everything I knew. I taught him how to operate and do everything. And amen, when I felt that he was completely already trained, all of a sudden, praise God, I noticed one day, the same day, praise God, that I felt that he was ready. Uh, the, 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 um, a forklift. We had a very large building. Amen. A forklift came in, and I noticed they was moving everything out of the the uh, the, the over my senior um lead, uh, mil, um um uh, supervisor's office, moving everything out, moving his desk, moving the chair, moving everything. Everything was being moved, and they was putting it on his pallet, and they was moving everything. And all of a sudden, the colonel, praise God, it was in charge of everybody, came down to my little cubicle. I had a cubicle then, and he said, Sergeant Cam, Staff Sergeant Cam, I need to speak to you come to my office. So I knew right then already, Dana already fired me. I thought things was terrible for me, praise God. So I just, hey man, I said, yes sir, I'll be right there. He goes back to his office. So as I go there, I'm praying, listen to this. Now mind you, they already done down me, praise God. They already got me training my subordinate. They already told me they're going to take my job. Didn't tell nobody else, but I told the Lord. And they got there to the colonel's office. He said, listen, today, praise God, I just fired the chief warrant officer. I fired your media supervisor Advisor, and you are now in charge of the whole unit. I begin to shout and praise God, but let me explain to you why. No, they thought they were doing it for my bad by me training this man everything he needed to know. No, the reason why they were doing it, because God knew that they were going to have to leave and I was going to be in charge and I need to make sure he knew what he was doing when they left. 
y'all ain't hearing me. So God will just say, oh, y'all ain't catch it. See, when you let the Lord fret not yourself because of evil doer, because soon they'll be cut off. That's an example. God had me train this man up. God had me give him all the information, knowledge, abilities, everything, so that he'll be able to do it when I take over and take a position that I wouldn't even have the rank to have. You ain't trying to hear me, but when you let the Lord do it, and you don't fight, oh, God, thank you. And I'm trying to tell you, God moved in a mighty way, praise God. And I was never lacking another thing after that. Everything I needed, God blessed me with. I began to get rank on top of rank on top of rank. I can tell you, praise God, how God favored because when you let God fight. Now, that's a good example, praise God, of shutting your mouth and let God do it. I'm so glad I didn't open my mouth because God had me train this man so I could take over the whole thing. Amen, somebody. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Somebody say amen to me out there. Praise God. We got to love our enemies. Praise God. And listen to this. Listen to this. This is going to really blow your mind. Now, what happened, praise God, they, they moved them, praise God. They moved them around in the same unit. Uh huh. That means, praise God, they was in the unit, but not under the same section, under the same department, maybe you're saying, yo. They weren't in the same department, but I could see them, but they had nothing to do with me. They had nothing to do with them. I was in charge of my department. But what happened, praise God, God began to favor me so much. I got promoted so fast that I became in charge of all of them. Y'all ain't hearing me. So the same ones that had wronged me now had to answer to me. Oh, God, I shut up on my... And what did I do? Did I act like I was mean? Did I act like I was the boss? I treated them according to the will of God. I loved on them, praise God, and I treated them like they were somebody, and God favored me for doing that. I never asked, I never treated them like they did something wrong. I never did them because I, I could have very easily put them out of the military. I could have very easily messed their career up. I could have very easily made their life miserable, made them stay at work every day, all the time, late. But God showed me, just show favor. Show them how I would do it. And that's what I did. And because of that, God favored and covered me and prospered me through my whole military career. He's prospered me through my my life outside of my military career because I've always stayed in that kind of mindset. So fret not yourself because of evildoers. Amen. And Love your enemies and watch what God does for you. Come on, give God a hand clap. I know I was going to go over. I had to share that. Praise God. Somebody need to hear that I ain't just talking out my mouth. I ain't talking about what I heard. I'm talking about what I live. Amen. So God has been that good to me. Amen. He's been good to you. I know some of you have been hurt and wounded by people, but tonight, praise God, God has said, love them anyhow. Amen. Praise God. The old preacher used to say, love hell out of them. Come on, someone. Love hell out of them. Praise God. Love them. Praise God. To show God is real. Amen. Let's go before the Lord. Amen. Asking God to bless each one of us in a very powerful and special way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, God. You're telling us to do something, God, that we usually, God, doesn't even think to do. God, learning to love those, God, that are really against us, Lord. The ones that have talked against us and, 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 and did things very wrong, God. Some, God, we just, sometimes, God, it just seems outrageous for us to even think like that. But God, I want to be a hundred percent and receive every promise you have for my life. So tonight, God, God, help me to forgive anyone that's ever done wrong to me. Help me, God, to love God unconditionally. Help me accept people that don't look like me, act like me, and walk like me. Help me, God, to be an example, God, that I'll be the light in the room and I can be the taste around the table. God, in the name of Jesus, from this day forward, I bind even the thought of the coming back to attack me, God even things that hurt my life. I refuse to allow any more room in my life. I decree right now, God, soon be, you're going to take care of everything. And I believe it from the top of my, from my spirit, man, God, and God right now, every promise that your words say shall line up for my life because I determined to live according to your will. Now, Heavenly Father, God, we still speak over all God that is dealing with the pandemic, God, in a very special way. We need you, God, to be wise, help us to be wise about all that we do. Bless God, the care of the healthcare workers, God, Bless every postman, everybody that deliver a package. Bless every grocery worker. Bless them all. Provide for them, God, in very special ways. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to bless our homes. Bless the elderly in a very special way. Keep us before you, God, that our minds be stayed on you. I decree right now in the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I claim, God, that sooner or later, somewhere in my future, I'm looking much better than I look right now. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. Listen here, praise God. Now, one last thing. You all are getting those checks. 
I need you not just to waste the money. I know some of you are not very disciplined with money, but I'm asking God through this series that you start being a little wiser. Take that money, pay your bills, close your eyes, go to the bank, pay those bills, pay those bills off. If you got a payday loan, one of them payday loans around town, get rid of it now. It's only a rip off. It's going to destroy you. I am against payday loans 100%. You need not to get them anymore. You can hold off, eat milk. Amen. Just get yourself a bunk of eggs. Come see me. We got food for you. But we got to do without those payday loans, praise God. We're going to change the way we do things. Our economic situation is going to shift. That's part of prosperity in God. Somebody say amen to me. So I love everyone. If God knows I do, that's absolutely not a thing you can do about it. Be blessed. I will see you all tomorrow at 630. Have a great night.